application points. Just give me one quick moment here, please. Hello. Uh, hello. Yeah, looks like uh, Emmanuel's screen is stuck. Yeah. Hey, um, can you hear me now? Yeah, I can. Yeah. Okay, cool. All right. So <clears throat> just to give you a little idea about how our present situation is in terms of uh, the architecture and what we have um, or how HANA has taken over. Uh, this is basically a snapshot of uh, the EDW that we have. Our enterprise might have uh, different ERP and non-ERP systems which basically feed into an enterprise data warehouse. And um, we have an existing database like Oracle or SQL or uh, anything of that sort and to basically support the amount of data. We used to have a physical uh, server which was called as the BW Accelerate, which was able to improve the performance of our reporting area. But now uh, what we have is that SAP HANA has come in picture and it basically replaced the March level. So first uh, the SAP HANA replaced the March level and also was used in parallel in terms of uh, the BW Accelerator to improve the corporate reporting. Then <clears throat> Right, so basically, <clears throat> um, right now this is what we have. We have uh, HANA replacing BW Accelerator. And any new applications that we build, we will be building on top of SAP HANA itself. So it's a complete uh, takeover of uh, SAP uh, as an underlying layer, the HANA is used. Now this is what we have in terms of the present situation. Across the entire enterprise, you might have one enterprise database, which is HANA. And uh, on top of that, you all you have all the different uh, applications. And uh, any new applications that you bring in will be on top of HANA. So you have BW on HANA. HANA, ECC on HANA, CRM on HANA, uh, PI on HANA. And so all of these basically use uh, SAP HANA as an underlying database. This is, uh, these are some of the specifications of the vendors who provide SAP HANA service. Um, on the left side, you have the vendor name, Dell, Fujitsu, HP, IBM, and all that. And um, the, the third column is basically the kind of processor that we're using. And we all know i3, i5, and i7 processors, right? But this is the next generation processor for 
i3, i5, and i7. These are called as Nehenim processors. These are the processors that basically uh, are the next generation. And you can see the memory capability of the servers 256, 512, 1 TB, uh, 2 TB, and 4 TB RAMs. All of these hardware are run on the operating system, which is SLES 11 SP1, SUSE Linux Enterprise Server 11, Service Pack 1. Right? You don't have the Windows uh, server operating system. It's always SUSE Linux uh, Enterprise Server. Now this is for um, uh, servers which are, let's say, medium and uh, uh, small, extra small and small servers. Now, once the servers become bigger, uh, the kind of uh, processors they use are called as Westmayer processors. These are the next generation to Nehalem. And uh, these are the kind of processes that we use on SAP HANA server. Uh, they also run on the SUSE Linux Enterprise server. Right? Just this is for information sake, so that you have an idea about what you are going to use. Now, the SAP HANA consists of these components, which is the in-memory computing engine, uh, the IMC, which I call IMC, I, I spoke about this yesterday. Uh, IMC is basically for all the components to basically communicate one with the other, you have uh, the subcomponents, which are like the IMC, ODBO, ODBC, JDBC, and SQL DBC. Um, these are for uh, the communication of the different interfaces. Then you have the SAP IMC Studio, which includes the SAP HANA module, which is the one that we're working on. The Sybase Replication Server uh, and ECDA, Sybase Replication Agent, HANA control, Load Controller, and the Host Agent. So these are the components, core components that you get along with HANA itself as a standalone. There are three major editions in terms of SAP HANA. One is called as the platform edition, second one is called as the enterprise edition, and third one is called as the enterprise extended edition. Just to have an idea about the different editions that we have in HANA. The first one, uh, the platform edition, is not for all customers. This is only for very limited customers who are already existing SAP customers and who, are, who actually have um, who run SAP services and also who have licenses for data services and SLP. For these customers, we give uh, the core components, which is the SAP HANA database, HANA studio, HANA client, the host agent, and the HANA information composite. You don't have any other component along with this. So this is for only uh, the SAP uh, customers, existing SAP customers. For, um, again, the Enterprise Edition is also for existing SAP customers. Um, the additional thing that we have here is that uh, this is for, um, for customers who have already, who do not have business objects, data services, and SLT licenses. These are also bundled in this particular edition. You have the SAP HANA database, studio client, host agent information composer. Along with that, you also have the LT replication add-on, LT replication server, and uh, the SAP Business Objects Data Services 4.x. So this is the Enterprise Edition. Remember, the Platform Edition and the Enterprise Edition, both of these are for existing SAP customers only. All right. The third one is for the Enterprise Extended Edition, or basically called the Enterprise Extended Edition. This is for customers who want to use the full potential of all available features, basically meaning this is for non-SAP customers who want to leverage SAP HANA for real-time reporting. All right. For these kind of customers, uh, you're going to bundle all the components, which is the core SAP HANA component. And also, one of the most important part is how you can replicate data into these third-party 
and for that you will have the bundle of SMP sideways and data uh, service. Emmanuel? Yeah. So this is Ravi. So this enterprise extended edition is uh, where uh, the native HANA comes into picture? All these three are native HANA. All these okay. three are native HANA. This is for customers who want to use HANA but who are not previously SAP customers and they want to use SAP HANA because they want to leverage real-time reporting. Sure. Okay. okay, thank you. So yeah, uh, they have everything bundled in here. They cannot pick and choose like how the other two have. Um, it's, it's a standard uh, set of components. They use it or they don't, they get all the components. And so yesterday, uh, I spoke about this part, which is basically the architecture. Consists of three layers, is what I mentioned yesterday. The first layer, the bottom layer, which is the replication layer, or layer one, where you have real-time replication services, or side-based, or log-based replication, SLT and data services. The second layer is your IMC, in-memory computing engine, which consists of the calculation and planning engine and also the row and column storage. So all the data that is uh, extracted using these replication engines are stored on the RAM on the row and column storage. I told you that the calculation engine is used for not just arithmetic calculation, but also translation. The planning engine allows you to have planning applications like predictive analytics and things like that on top of SAP HAN. The modeling studio basically consists of these three components, which are the four models in SAP HANA, attribute view, analytic view, and calculation view. Remember that all of these are views. They don't really have any physical storage of data. It's only consumption of physical stores that are there on row and column stores using joins and cardinality. We've also seen this about in terms of uh, the memory capability. Uh, you, I told you that we have two kinds of memories. One is non-volatile and the other one is volatile. Uh, in terms of hard disk, usually you can increase the memory to a very high level, but uh, the, uh, the, the time taken uh, to retrieve data and all that is, if you compare it with SSDs and flash drives, it is uh, slower by 150 times, and the RAM is 2,000 times faster than the SSDs and the flash drives. Uh, you also have CPU cache and CPU registers, and we do not have technology right now to improve that, or else we would have uh, utilized that as well. But RAM, we are able to basically improve uh, the storage capability, but uh, we also have uh, the risk of volatile data that you might lose all of your data in case your server goes down. So in all, uh, what I was trying to say is the RAM is at least 2,000 times 150, which is 300,000 times faster than uh, your hard drive. And so we're going to leverage using RAM in terms of storage capabilities for SAP HANA. So that's why we call this as the in-memory uh, server or memory database. Now today, we're going to talk about uh, these five areas. One is the database, the second one is the loading capability, uh, modeling, reporting, and administration. <clears throat> this screen that you see right now is a snapshot of what we have in terms of the database engine view. The components such as the disk storage, persistence layer, and all of these. I'm going to basically split this into a smaller thing to explain things in a better way. Um, try and follow that. In case you have any questions, make sure you ask. So this is basically what is the core of the SAP HANA database. So if you see the bottom layer, you consist, it basically consists of uh, four or five different database uh, servers. On top of that, you have client applications. Uh, the left client application is basically the reporting tool that use or connect into the SAP HANA database. On the right, you also have client applications which connect using the HTTP REST and HTML protocols. These are for mobile applications that you can build on top of SAP HANA. 
or even uh, theory applications and interfaces, UI5 interfaces that you can connect with HANA. On the right side, the SAP HANA Studio itself, uh, which is the interface that we'll be working on, it also connects into the SAP HANA database using the SQL interface. There are five major components in terms of uh, the different components that exist on the database server. The first one is the index server. The second one is the access engine. The third one is the reprocessor server. Fourth is the statistic server. And the fifth is the name server. These are primarily the most important components within the database. The index server is the most important component of them all. And this is the one that handles everything in terms of storage, in terms of compiling, in terms of choosing uh, to re resolve any kind of queries from your reporting tool. For all of that, that is the index server. All right. The index server has the SAP HANA port and also the SQL port. So all these reporting tools that you use on top of HANA are connecting into the SQL port of the index server. The access engine is basically uh, for uh, applications such as uh, UI5 and Fury and mobile applications for them to interface into HANA. You will be using HTTP, REST, and uh, HTML protocols. But right now, at this point, we are not talking anything about the access engine. So this is optional for us. So we'll leave that out. The, repro uh, the preprocessor server that you see here, uh, the preprocessor server is the one that is responsible for all your text searches that happen on the server. Any kind of text search that you do on the server, the preprocessor server is the one that is responsible. The statistics server is the one that is responsible for the health of the system. In case of any kind of long running joins or long running queries, or even uh, consumption of uh, the RAM or the ability to uh, look at uh, joins or deadlocks or things like that, you will be looking at the statistics server. Right. The name server is the one that is responsible for the topology of the system. Now, topology is a, a name that basically defines the routing of how the search happens on the server. For example, uh, the database is not all stored in one uh, component, but sometimes it is uh, split into multiple instances. As you can see here, you have three instances, uh, host one, host two, and host three. Now, when you are, uh, the name server basically is available on all the three. The first host one is the master, the other two are the slaves. But the name server exists on all the three. So when you are querying, let's say, for a particular object, it might not be on the first host one or the first instance. And so the name server directs the, the basic query to go into, let's say, host one or host two or a different instance so that your search happens faster. You don't have to search use the entire uh, name server on host one and then realize that this information is not on that particular instance. So the name server basically redirects it consists uh, of the Excuse me, man. Yeah. So all these instances run on a single machine? It could be on different machines as well. OK. OK. But uh, all these servers are programs. All these servers are? Are programs, right, on the database? These are components. So Components. So we have a database instance, uh, uh, host one. Mm -hmm. So we have five servers on it, right? Index server, access engine, and. Uh, right. So are those programs or. Uh, I'm talking it, about actual components. So let me so show physical. you physical components. Yeah. So when you go in here, let's say. So all five are uh, like microchips. You can call them as services. Okay. 
sorry because uh, i did not attend the previous classes maybe okay so when i Oops. Uh, let's say this is a I'm a DB system, and if I go into the server itself, so you can see here the servers that are there or services that are utilized. You have the compiler server, the daemon server, the index server, name server, preprocessor server. SAP start server, web dispatcher, access engine, access uh, agent, and then uh, UA server. These are all the components. Okay. So, okay, please. So, they all reside on uh, HDB1. You have a different host name here. Okay. This one doesn't have multiple instances, it's all one instance. Okay. Okay. So the name server basically the what the name server basically does is it it redirects or it for your search. So that's what happens on the name server. I hope uh, you can see my screen. Uh, the snapshot might be a little blur, but uh, let me try and explain it. And then I'll show you the clearer picture of what it is. Okay. So this is, I told you that one of the most important components is the index server, right? So the index server, what is there inside the index server? Let's try and understand that. And this particular snapshot that you have is basically of the index server, all right? So you can see the left bottom, it says SAP HANA database index server. Now this is what happens um, in terms of how we go ahead and query. On the top, you can see database clients, and these are nothing but your reporting tools, which we are going to leverage on top of SAP HANA. You could use any reporting tool. There is uh, no proprietary reporting tool for HANA. You could use business objects or uh, non-SAP uh, reporting tools as well, MS Excel and all of these. So when you first go ahead and want to send out a query, the first thing the system asks you is uh, about the connection details for you to connect into SAP HANA. And this is where the authentication happens. You can see on the left side, there is uh, the authentication. So the authentication happens in two different ways. Uh, one is regular table authentication, where you have a username and the password. It basically checks for what you've entered. For uh, sensitive information and classified information, you also have uh, the Kerberos protocol uh, for authentication. It sends out to a third server and then it checks uh, your encryption and decryption happens there. That's how you authenticate uh, your connection. Once you authenticate your connection, uh, the session parameters basically open a session for you and that is handled by the session management and the transaction manager. Now there might be multiple people who are trying to uh, open different sessions, different reporting tools uh, to query on HANA. The system basically uh, here, the session parameters and the transaction manager allocates uh, different sessions for uh, different users and reporting tools. 
once it crosses that layer, then you have the request processing and execution control. Now this is the this is the framework of the calculation engine where you have a lot of components. I told you that the calculation engine is not just um, arithmetic calculation like the name suggests, but it is also a translation. Now when you are firing a query from a reporting tool after it uh, crosses the connection part, the query is basically pushed down here and then there is an SQL processor. The SQL processor basically tries to go in and understand the query and simplify the query by parsing the query. On top of the calculation engine, you have the stored procedure processor, the planning engine, the MDX engine. Now, if there is any kind of a, a different uh, querying language, the system will try to translate that using the one of these engines. Right? If it is an SQL, uh, HANA is a database, right? So it basically understands only native SQL. So the SQL processor and the SQL parser basically tries to simplify the query and push it down onto the calculation engine. Once that is done, then the actual relational stores come into picture because the data is actually there in the relational stores. The relational stores consist of the row store and the column store, and these are actually there on your RAM or on the main memory. Uh, main memory, which is the RAM, is a limited um, memory, and then you cannot extend it like how you extend your hard drive. So basically, you will want to keep the most recently used information on the RAM so that you are able to uh, give the fastest information possible. If you are trying to hold information like uh, BW, which has 8 to 10 years of data, holding all of that on the RAM is not possible. Uh, so what we have is probably we store two years of data on the RAM. The rest of it is basically archived onto a physical drive. That's why if you see here, apart from the row store and column store, you also have disk-based storage. Uh, and that is where you archive your data. <clears throat> so in case your query is basically something from your uh, archived information, then your temporary results basically read out of that and then bring it back into your column stores. And from there, you uh, give your results. So the request processing and execution control and the relational stores basically allow you to go ahead and um, give the results for your queries. Now here, SAP HANA is a database. And then um, you have the the database features of page management and logger as well on the persistence layer, which is nothing but your row and column storage. Page management is a database term where we are storing the data. And then the logger keeps a log of all the data that is written so that you don't redundantly load the data into the same database schemas. And finally, um, we spoke about volatile and non-volatile data, right? So if you're storing the entire data on the RAM, that is pretty risky because that is volatile information. So from time to time, pretty much like every half minute or one minute, data is backed up onto a physical storage, which is the disk storage, as data volumes and transaction log volumes. So that just in case there is any kind of a power failure or uh, any kind of system failure, you are able to retrieve your data from the data volumes and log volumes. So this is basically what happens in the index server. <clears throat> the metadata manager and the repository basically allow you to maintain versions of the objects that you create. The authentication manager or authorization manager basically gives you the control about what you are doing on each of these levels of the individual models that you create. So these are basically the components that you have on the index server, right? The most important component is the index server. One thing you can remember is the port number as to how you can connect to the index server. The system has a specific sequence. The port numbers are five-digit port numbers. This is useful whenever you're making connections with reporting tools or third-party tools. Remember that the index server port number starts with three and ends with 15. 
the instance of your database is what is there between that three instance number and 15 so if your instance number is 00, zero your uh, index port number index server port number will be 30015 if your instance number is 01 then it will be 0115 Now this is a snapshot of what uh, we've seen just now on the index server, but if you look at it from a server perspective, so apart from all these components, you also have the SAP HANA Studio Repository, the Software Update Manager, which is also called as SUN, the SAP Host Agent. Uh, the Software Update Manager basically is the one that is linked to your marketplace so that any kinds of updates and upgrades are directly reflected on your uh, HANA Studio. Uh, the SAP host agent basically allows, allows you to have multiple hosts on the same system. Now, SAP HANA itself, the database itself is very expensive, uh, the appliance. And so you cannot, you know, the regular way of how we have landscapes is you have a development quality and production. And for each of them, you have a different box. But if you have to buy like that for HANA, it becomes way too expensive. So what they do is they take one uh, HANA system and using the SAP host agent, you create multiple instances of development quality and production. So on the same box, you have all the three, right? That is handled by the SAP host agent. The SAP HANA client is the one which consists of all the connection information for interfacing with reporting tools or data services or other tools that you want to connect to SAP HAN. Uh, the LM structure is the one that is uh, necessary for your transport connection. JVM is your Java virtual machine for all the reporting tools and then the SAP car. These are all the components that are there on your HANA server. On the HANA client which we install on our system, it's all uh, the SAP HANA studio and the SAP HANA client. These two are uh, enough for us on our system. So the SAP HANA Studio allows us to connect to the interface. SAP HANA Client allows us to make connections like the ODBC, JDBC, SQLDBC connections with uh, reporting tools and data services. So these are basically a little idea that you need to have about the HANA database. From a loading perspective, SAP HANA, uh, the proprietary report, I mean, the proprietary uh, ETL tools that are used along with HANA are either business objects data services or SLT. Business objects data services has an interface called as the designer through which all the ETL process is done. Uh, you execute jobs, you create uh, connections and all that. And using SLT also you will uh, go ahead and define uh, once and what is your source SAP system and what is your HANA DB connection target. So all of that is defined and then you define how to run real-time process and all that. At any point of time, um, any kind of data loads that you do, either using uh, these ETL uh, services or using SAP HANA's native services or even importing just the Excel sheets into SAP HANA. Uh, at any point of time, your data can only be written till the persistence layer, all right, which is the row and the column storage. Data does not come beyond that. Because there is no storage as in uh, how we have it in BW, there are no multiple layers. There is only one persistence layer, and that is the only place where you are going to store data. Right? The rest of the places, there are only views which consume that information using joins and cardinality. So from a loading perspective, uh, a very high level idea that we have uh, these ETL tools of business objects, data services, and SLT. And uh, these are basically able to load data to your persistence layer. Right. From a modeling perspective, <clears throat> SAP HANA basically 
the majority of modeling is done on the SAP HANA Studio. Now, the Studio looks very, very similar, or the modeling looks very, very similar to what we used to do on Business Objects Universe, where we bring in the tables and then we do the joins and uh, all of that, like how we used to do it on the Universe. But doing it at the reporting layer basically is consuming a lot of the, uh, uh, it's, it's quite some stress on the reporting layer. So instead of doing it at the reporting layer, now we have uh, not even on the application layer, but we have pushed this down directly onto the database itself. So majority of your modeling is done on the HANA Studio, which is directly being doing that on the database itself. But apart from that, you also have a little bit of fine tuning that you can do on the, uh, if you're using business objects, you could do it on the universe layer using the information design tool. The IDT, which is from the business objects, allows you to basically import your model as is from HANA and also do some additional uh, fixes that you can if you want to do any additional modeling on the information design tool. Right, that basically builds up the universe, but again, this is an optional thing. It's not necessarily the same path that you should do. You might skip information design tool as well. From a reporting, uh, from an ETL perspective, in SAP HANA, what we do are use basically one table uh, joining with another table. If you want to go ahead and do that at the ETL level, also you could do that. Like, for example, in data services, you can go ahead and do the join between both the tables. And when you bring that into SAP HANA itself, you join. And again, these are things that you could consider or you might not want to do it. It's up to individual clients. But just to mention that modeling can start from the ETL tool itself. Majority of it is done on the HANA Studio and then a little bit of fine tuning can also be done on the information design tool on the universe level. These are things uh, that might come in play in terms of the model. The model itself basically uh, is the attribute view, analytic views, and the calculation views. Um, attribute and analytic views are graphical designs um, and graphical interface, whereas the calculation view is the only view that has the option for both analytic and, I mean, for uh, both graphical and scripting. We'll see that as we go along. From a reporting perspective, <clears throat> once we go ahead and create a model in SAP HANA, these models can be consumed by the reporting uh, portfolio of reporting tools that you have on top of HANA. They do not have a proprietary reporting tool, and so any reporting tool that you use can have uh, a connection uh, made to SAP HANA. <clears throat> um, for this, they use the client, which is basically you will have to run the SAP HANA client so that the interfaces are available, ODBC, JDBC. At any point of time, leverage JDBC over ODBC. Uh, to have the full functionality of the tool. Uh, but if you just have ODBC, then uh, that's how you will need to connect. You can use any of business objects reporting tools, uh, MS Excel, Predictive Analytics, Tableau, ClickView. All of these can be leveraged on top of HANA. Right. And we spoke about how the process of uh, pushing down the querying happens. Each of them have a different reporting um, language. Business objects use its proprietary BICS, Business Intelligence Consumer Services. Um, MS Excel push, pushes down the queries as MDX, multidimensional expressions. Um, Crystal reports as SQL. Uh, so basically, SAP HANA understands this as uh, SAP HANA pushes down but basically, SAP HANA is the one that understands only native SQL, right? So <clears throat> this is basically from a reporting perspective. And finally, from an admi ad administrative perspective, uh, this is one of the most important parts, basically because 
these are the people or places guys who basically ensure that we have our data uh, in um, so we are dealing with SAP HANA which is non or basically volatile memory and there is a risk of losing data so you will have to back up your data and recover uh, that in case that that happens. So from time to time data is backed up from um, our row and column storages of the RAM into a physical disk storage. And this happens as a continuous process every one minute or two minutes. Uh, and in case of any failure, you should be able to recover and pick it up within a minute or two. That is usually the SLA time that is given. In terms of uh, all the models that are there, you still can also uh, define roles and restrictions as to how a particular user can access. And that restriction is basically defined on the database user itself. So when you log in into the SAP HANA Studio, you will log in with a database user. So restrictions are directly on the database user. And so the administration basically deals with majorly um, your handling of data. Apart from that, uh, restriction on users, roles creation is what uh, we deal with the administration. So these are some of the most important features that we have, or ADS and HANA, that we will be looking into. Um, from tomorrow, we are going to look at the SAP HANA Studio, which is the interface that uh, we're going to use for HANA, for native HANA, and also for BW and HANA. So, uh, yeah, tomorrow we'll start off with uh, giving an exposure about what are the components that you have, how you can navigate to the SAP HANA Studio. Right. So, any questions? Hey, Emmanuel. Yeah. Any uh, just a quick question. Um, so when you create these ADSOs and composite providers, so the data gets stored in the row storage, row store tables, right? Is that right? Column store. Like even when you create ADSOs and uh, composite providers and all that, it gets stored in the column store? That's right. By default? Yeah. So the moment you, okay. Um, so all the views, I thought you would have to define the table, whether it is a row store or a column store table? By default, the system creates as a column store. When you create a, a, a row, I mean, when you create a table, you can see that here. So if I go into the system itself. So by default, it, it creates a column store. But if you if there is a need for a row store, then you would have to select that and change that into your row store. So if I go into any of the schemas and say, let's say I want to create a table. Um, Let's say I right click here. If I say create a new table, the system doesn't really ask. It's automatically going to create a column store. Okay. But if you have an switch to change it, you can create it as a row store. So when you so so if you did not so let's say you have a DSO, not ADSO. So uh -huh. it's probably default. It's it is stored in a row store table by default okay. before you convert it into ADSO. Any of those objects that you use with HANA, they'll have only column store. So let's say you're creating an ADSO. No, no, I mean I'm saying not even creating ADSOs, but like let's say you have a BW and a HANA system, and then you have DSOs, uh -huh. uh, and you haven't converted it to ADSO yet. So by default, the DSO, the tables underneath the DSO. They're all stored in row store or column store? They're all on column store. So you can see these are all uh, the underlying database for BW. OK. So each, all of these tables are <coughs> column stores itself. Right. No, they're all stored in column store table. OK. OK. But then if there's a need to convert any of this into row store, you can do that, right? You will not really have a need. So uh, by default, the system creates it as a column store. Okay, okay. And uh, you mentioned about disk storage. Um, so is that is that a standard like every HANA database system has a, a memory storage and a disk storage, right? So, and then it, it does the backups um, every minute or however it is. That's a standard, isn't it? You can schedule your backups and recovery. So that is done directly. Yeah, okay. that's a 
is is this uh, the reason i'm asking that question is so this is different from data tearing isn't it the data tearing the hot warm cold backups and all that is that different this, from this 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 storage or is that very similar see the <clears throat> the kind of allocation of memory that you'd want to use is what uh, your storage is so if it's a hot and warm kind of a data that you're using which is basically the data that you use more regularly than yes often that is stored on your ram itself all right and uh -huh. then the data that you really are not going to use that is called as the cold data and that yeah. is you get on your disk space so Many is that more. different from the the disk backup that you have mentioned before in one of the slides so is that on, storage separate or is it same as this it's not necessarily always to be a disk backup you might have a separate data that you have archived on the same disk or on a different disk So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Usually, my basis, guys, is to you mention that any data that is more than two years old, you can push it on to your archive folder and onto a disk. They'll handle that part. Okay. Okay, and 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 uh, in in one of the slides, uh, you had multiple hosts, right? So each host had a. Uh, uh multiple index servers or something multiple hosts like each, they had a each host has has a database in it so if you have to do data tiering are you going to have each like i, I don't know yeah, the slide i forgot the slide that you showed where you had multiple hosts uh -huh. um so is each host is going to have a a disk backup is that how it, you would have to do it or there's going to be just uh, one disk backup for all the hosts if you are at different locations or basically if it's at different locations you will have individual disk backups okay 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 that's it so that's all I want to ask thanks thank you man anything else guys no all right then <clears throat> I will see you all tomorrow, same time. We're going to talk about uh, the SAP HANA Studio. I don't know if any of you have an um, idea of what the SAP HANA. So make sure that you attend the second tomorrow. We're going to look at the studio. Uh, and then that will be basically understanding the navigation and components for uh, working on the HANA Studio and also on the VWM HANA. All right. Yeah, I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. So Emmanuel, this is uh, Monday to Friday. That's right. Is this class Monday to Friday? That's what I said. Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. Bye. -bye. Thank you, man. Have a good day. Bye. Okay. I'll be sharing PW videos. Okay.